Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome back to yet another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which we're gonna play some musical vandalism. Yep, we're gonna take the canon in D chord progression, arguably the most famous and prominent chord progression in modern music, and we're gonna make it completely our own. I'm gonna show you several different methods and lots of ideas on how you can manipulate this chord progression, the canon in D chord progression, and I'm gonna show you the progression in two keys and how you can improvise and compose your own variations on it, okay? So uh, let's start. The progression, in case you're the single person who doesn't know it, is this. D, A, B minor, F sharp minor, G, D, A. Okay, this is the canon in D chord progression. Now, we're gonna start by playing it actually in C, okay? Because that will be easier to experiment on and then move on to the D scale. So in C, the canon chord progression is C, G, A minor, E minor, F, C, G, okay? So um, you start by actually listening to the chords, okay? And you start to try and find connections, okay? Connections between the chords. For example, if you have C and G, you can connect by the E string, by zero and three. Or you can play, okay? You can play G with three on the second string because it's part of this G chord shape with three and three on strings one and two. So you can choose, okay? You can create a high lick or a low lick, a C and G, or A and G, okay? Either one works. And then you have A minor and E minor, so you just listen to it, you just play around with the chord notes. Okay? So try different ways to pick the chord. Try strings two and three. Immediate melody. Okay, you get an instant melody. If you play strings one and two, okay, it's a different melody. If you play strings one, two, and three, just randomly, you get something different. Okay? Then you move on to F. You can play F like this. Okay, one, one, two, three on strings one, two, three, and four. Or you can play the bar to F, okay? Bar on one, E chord shape, okay? Now this allows you uh, for more exper experimentation because you have the, the, the fourth finger free, you have the pinky free, and you can open the E string as well. Okay, this is for later, but this is why I prefer this F. But you can start by playing this F if you like, and see how that sounds. And then you take it to G, okay, or to C and G, okay, and you create another melody, right? So now let's connect everything. is really good for instant melodies. Now, you can start adding licks to it by playing the scale itself, okay? You have three on the E string and three on the B string for any chord you want to play. You see? I'm just playing around and adding licks after each chord with three and three on strings one and two. It takes a little bit of experimentation, but you can do it, okay? Just slow it down. Okay? Just try adding 0, 3 on the E string or the B string, every chord. Then you have F. Okay? You can okay, add 3 on the E string. Okay? Or 3 on the B string. 
Mm -hmm. And then you go back to C, so you have one, three, one. You have a lick, so. And then you play G. You don't have to do anything else. Or you play the high three, the high G note, okay, on the E string with F. And then you have the open E string in C. So again, you have three zero. Okay, you have an instant melody. Now, you can stay on this for as long as you'd like to. Okay, just experiment with the chord progression and add threes on the E string. When you're ready, try to create little embellishments with a hammer-on, with a slide, with a pull-off. Okay, try, just try it. Okay, just hammer on and then play the open E string again. Okay, now what did I do on A minor? I pulled off one to zero on the second string. And I have this note in E minor, so it created a really cool lick, but I played Okay, I played the next note of the A minor as well. I played the one pull off the zero on the second string, and then two on the third. So, and then I played E minor. Okay, so just experiment with it. Just experiment with pull offs, experiment with hammer offs. Okay? okay? And then. You see, I did the same thing. I did. Hammer on to three on the E string, then move on to C. Then I did hammer on to three on the second string and move on to G. I just add one note every time. Sounds like I'm playing a lot of things, but I'm just playing the chord notes and I'm adding one extra note at a time. I just have a lot of experience with this. I just have a lot of experience in improvisation, so I have confidence in my own playing. Okay, that's what you need. You have to be confident that whatever you play will sound good. Okay, as long as you keep playing, it's fine. Just keep playing. There are no mistakes. Even if you play the chord longer, okay, than necessary. If you play... Okay, it's still an interesting creation. Okay, you don't really have to stick to the bars. You can do whatever you, whatever you like to do, whatever it is you hear at the moment. Try it, try it. Try playing one chord longer, one chord shorter. Um, just experiment with the sound and see what you get. Just listen. That's the most important thing. Just listen to what you play. Okay, so now you can also play uh, the... Um, you can play the one on the second string, but it's a little bit tricky. Because it's kind of the same thing all the time. So just add it every now and then, okay? Pulling off one to zero on the second string. You can do it um, on every chord that doesn't have it. Now you can, you can also you can also slide, but if you're a complete beginner, don't do it because it's disorienting at first. So yeah, you can slide to five on the E string. Yeah, using your little finger, you can slide to five and then play the next chord. Click can fit on every every chord. Okay, every extra note that you add can can fit wherever. You can do whatever it is you like. So I'm gonna play something. I'm gonna improvise something for you and show you everything that I just uh, that I just uh, experimented with myself. I'm gonna try to create a coherent improvisation. Then we'll move on to the D key. Okay, to the D scale to canon in D. Okay, because it's canon in D, it's not canon in C. So it's easier to experiment on C because D is a little bit more complicated. So um, just listen to the chords first. And I'm just trying to create an interesting 
interesting rhythm. I don't try to do complex material. I just play the chords. Just have fun with the chords. That's the important thing. And when I play the chords, sometimes I play strings three and four. Okay, the low notes. I don't always play strings one and two. Okay, now I'll shut up and play. confused I keep wanting to play G instead of F but it still creates interesting music because I keep going I don't stop I don't tell myself oh I made a mistake this is not the right chord there's no such thing this is your experiment this is your music this is your improvisation you can do whatever it is you like All right so you see just just experiment with it just listen and try to create a different expression every time now for D, you have D, A, B minor, F sharp minor, and then uh, G, and then D and A. So again, start by listening. Okay, I'm just playing the chords. Now, in D, in the D scale, you have open strings. You can play almost all the open strings would sound good. But I say stick to the open E string, to the open B string, and to the open G string. Just the open first, second, and third strings. Not at the same time. Okay, just not at the same time. Every time, focus on another open string. Okay? Open the E string for every chord you want. for F sharp minor, if you want to open the E string, um, it's a little bit complicated. You can play this. You can play 2, 2, and 2 on strings, 2, 3, and 6. And then you have the open E string. Okay? Only if you want to. And then you have G with 3 on the second string with the open E string. And then again, D with the open E string. Okay, so this is one sound you can do almo almost immediately. All the chords with the open E string. Okay, but make sure that you change. You don't want to play the E string all the time. Play the chord, then open the string. three on the second string. You can play around with that. Okay, I just slide in between them. Okay, and on B minor you just pull it off. You can also on F sharp minor. as well you see it works and just having fun with the chords just arpeggiating them and adding adding licks in between I know that I'm playing it in a complex rhythm but I don't want to repeat what I played on the C scale I don't want to repeat the same idea I just want to give you a different direction you don't have to do what I do I'm just giving you ideas 
you can open the B string. Okay, with D. With A. With B minor. But it doesn't do much because you have the same note on the third string, so you don't really have to do it on the B minor. Now on F sharp minor it's weird as well, so just do it on D and A if you want. Just open the B string on D and A. And then you can open the third string on B minor. Okay? And then you have the F sharp minor. And then you have G. Now on G you can add the um, the A chord notes. You can add two and two on strings three and four, but you do it as a solo. Again, this is advanced stuff. This is an advanced approach. You don't have to do it okay, if you don't feel comfortable doing it yet. I'm just giving you ideas. Right, so now... You have two, three, and five on the E string. You can use that. Okay? Okay? Just use five on the E string as an extra note. Now, what did I do with A? I played the A chord as a bar. I barred the second, third, and fourth strings with five on the E string, okay? So that's another A chord. I think it's inside the canon in D. Okay, and then you can just play the notes. Two and three on strings one and two. So in D, it's a little bit more complicated, but it gives you a completely different sound. It gives you a more professional guitar sound if you try to improvise on it. It's more difficult, though. Okay, so you can just add the five. Just add one note every time. Just add one extra note. You can slide to seven as well. This is the last advice I'm going to give you. So, okay, this might be a little bit exaggerated, but you can slide your little finger to seven on the E string. Uh, so, uh, thanks for watching. Before you go practice this, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a ton of lessons over here. Check the playlists. There are hundreds of free lessons. So subscribe and become a member of the Lick and Riff community. Everyone is welcome. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again soon on the next lesson. Bye for now. Thank you. Enjoy.